Hello and welcome to this video walkthrough on using Autogen to tune OpenAI Chat GPT models for math problem solving. In this video, we will be exploring a Jupyter notebook that demonstrates how to set up the API endpoint, load the dataset, define the success metric, perform tuning, output tuning results, make a request with the tune config, and evaluate the success rate on the test data. We will also be comparing the performance of the tune configuration with the default, untuned GPT-4 config. So, let's get started. Welcome to this video walkthrough on using Autogen to tune open AI chat GPT models for math problem solving. In this current cell, we have a markdown cell that provides some background information on Autogen and its cost-effective hyperparameter optimization technique called EcoOptiGen. The study finds that tuning hyperparameters can significantly improve the utility of large language models. The markdown cell also explains that in this notebook, we will be tuning open AI chat GPT models for math problem solving using the math benchmark. The benchmark measures mathematical problem solving on competition math problems with chain of thought style reasoning. Lastly, the Markdown cell provides the requirements for running this notebook example, which includes having Python 3.8 or higher installed and installing Autogen with the Blend Search option using PIP. In the next cell, we will have a code cell that installs the necessary packages for this notebook. But for now, let's move on to the next step in this video walkthrough. In this current cell, we have a code cell that installs the necessary packages for this notebook. Specifically, we are installing Pyotogen Blend Search less than 0.2 and datasets using PIP. These packages are required for tuning hyperparameters of OpenAI Chat GPT models for math problem solving using the math benchmark, which we will be exploring in this notebook. In the next cell, we will be importing Autogen and discussing its API for hyperparameter optimization. Hello and welcome back! In this current cell, we have a markdown cell that explains how Autogen has provided an API for hyperparameter optimization of OpenAI Chat GPT models. The API includes two functions, autogen.chatcompletion.tune for tuning hyperparameters and autogen.chatcompletion.create for making a request with the tune configuration. To use this API, we need to first import the Autogen package, which we will do in the next code cell. Stay tuned for that! In this cell, we import the Autogen package which we will use to tune our OpenAI Chat GPT models for math problem solving. The Autogen package provides an API for hyperparameter optimization, which includes two functions, autogen.chatcompletion.tune for tuning hyperparameters and autogen.chatcompletion.create for making a request with the tune configuration. We will be using these functions later on in the notebook. In the next cell, we will set our API endpoint for Azure OpenAI and OpenAI. In this cell, we are setting our API endpoint for Azure OpenAI and OpenAI. We use the config underscore list underscore OpenAI underscore AI function from the Autogen package to create a list of endpoints. This function assumes that the API keys and bases are stored in environment variables or local text files. We need the OpenAI API key and the Azure OpenAI API key and base. If we don't have both, it's okay to have only the OpenAI API key or only the Azure OpenAI API key and base. In the next cell, we will use this config underscore list to set our API endpoint. In this cell, we import the Autogen package which we will use to tune our OpenAI chat GPT models for math problem solving. The Autogen package provides an API for hyperparameter optimization, which includes two functions, autogen.chatcompletion.tune for tuning hyperparameters and autogen.chatcompletion.create for making a request with the tune configuration. We will be using these functions later on in the notebook. To set up our API endpoint for Azure OpenAI and OpenAI, we use the config underscore list underscore OpenAI underscore AI function from the Autogen package. This function creates a list of endpoints that we will use to connect to the APIs. The config underscore list variable is assigned to the output of this function. In the next cell, we will set our API endpoint using this config underscore list. 
In this cell, we define a list called config underscore list which contains information about the API keys and base URLs for the AutoGen API. This list is created using the config underscore list underscore openi underscore AI function that we defined in the previous cell. The config underscore list contains three dictionaries, each with different information. The first dictionary contains the OpenAI API key, the second and third dictionaries contain Azure OpenAI API keys, base URLs, and other information. We can directly override this list if the config underscore list underscore OpenAI underscore AOI function returns an empty list. In the next cell, we load the competition underscore math dataset and create a random sample of 20 examples for tuning the generation hyperparameters. The remaining examples are used for evaluation. In this cell, we are importing the dataset's package and setting a random seed value. We then load the competition underscore math dataset and shuffle the training and testing data using the shuffle function. Next, we create a list called tune underscore data which contains 20 examples from the training data that are of level 2 and algebra type. We extract the problem and solution fields from these examples and store them in the tune underscore data list. We also create a list called test underscore data which contains examples from the testing data that are of level 2 and algebra type. We extract the problem and solution fields from these examples and store them in the test underscore data list. Finally, we print the length of tune underscore data and test underscore data to confirm that we have 20 examples for tuning and 201 examples for evaluation. In this cell, we have a markdown cell with the heading check a tuning example. This is just a note to ourselves to check a specific example in the next code cell. We'll see the code for that in the next cell. In this cell, we are printing out the second example from the tune underscore data list. This example is a math problem that involves solving for the value of 3a. We can see that the problem involves two equations with two variables, a and b. We will use this example to check the tuning of our model in the next cell. In this cell, we have a simple markdown statement that says here is one example of the canonical solution. This is just a statement and doesn't have any code associated with it. In the next cell, we will print out the solution to the second example in the tune underscore data list, which is a math problem involving solving for the value of 3a. We will use this example to check the tuning of our model in the next cell. In this cell, we are printing the solution to the second example in the tune underscore data list. This is to check the tuning of the model. The output shows the solution to a math problem involving a system of equations. In the next cell, we will define the success metric we want to optimize before we start tuning. In this cell, we are defining the success metric that we want to optimize before we start tuning our model. We will be using voting to select the response with the most common answers out of all the generated responses for each math task. If the response has an equivalent answer to the canonical solution, we consider the task as successfully solved. Then, we can optimize the mean success rate of a collection of tasks. In the next cell, we will import a package that will help us evaluate the math responses. In this cell, we are importing a package called eval underscore math underscore responses from the autogen.math underscore utils module. This package will help us evaluate the math responses generated by our model. We will be using this package to define the success metric that we want to optimize before we start tuning our model. In the next cell, we will use the tuning data to find a good configuration for our model. In this cell, we are using the tuning data to find a good configuration for our model. To ensure reproducibility and cost efficiency, we are caching responses from OpenAI with a controllable seed. This means that we can control the randomness of the responses generated by our model and reproduce the same results if needed. In the next cell, we will set the cache seed using the autogen.chatcompletion.set underscore cache function. In this cell, we are setting the cache seed using the autogen.chatcompletion.set underscore cache function. This will create a disk cache in cache slash seed to cache responses from OpenAI with a controllable seed. 
By doing this, we can control the randomness of the responses generated by our model and reproduce the same results if needed. In the next cell, we will perform tuning under the specified optimization budgets. In this cell, we are setting up a disk cache for the model's responses. This cache will be stored in a folder named cache with a subfolder for each seed value used. We can change the cache path route by modifying the set underscore cache function. Next, we will perform tuning on the model. The tuning process will take some time to complete, depending on the optimization budget. We have specified the optimization budget in terms of the target average inference budget per instance in the benchmark, the total budget allowed for tuning, and the number of different hyperparameter configurations allowed to try. Users can also specify tuning data, optimization metric, optimization mode, evaluation function, search spaces, and more. The default search space is provided in the code block, but users can override it with their own input. In the next cell, we will see the code for performing the tuning process with the specified parameters. In this cell, we are importing the logging package and creating a list of prompts for the math problem solving task. We are then using the autogen.chatcompletion.tune function to perform hyperparameter tuning on the tune underscore data dataset. We are specifying the metric to optimize, which is the success vote, and the optimization mode, which is to maximize the metric. We are also specifying the evaluation function to return the success metrics in the inference budget and optimization budget in dollars. We are using the GPT-3.5 Turbo model and providing a list of endpoint configurations to choose from. We are allowing format string templates and specifying the number of samples to try for different hyperparameter configurations. In the next cell, we will see the output of the tuning results. In this cell, we are going to print out the results of the tuning process that we just performed using the AutoGen API. We will print the optimized configuration and the best result found by AutoGen, which uses Flummel for tuning. In the next cell, we will see the code that will print out these results. In this cell, we are printing out the results of the tuning process that we just performed using the AutoGen API. We are printing the optimized configuration and the best result found by AutoGen, which uses Flummel for tuning. The optimized configuration includes the maximum number of tokens, the number of times the model should generate a response, the prompt to be used for generating responses, the model to be used, whether to allow format string templates, and the temperature to be used for generating responses. The best result on tuning data includes the expected success rate, the actual success rate, the success vote, and the voted answer. In the next cell, we will see the code that will print out these results. In this cell, we will use the optimized configuration that we found in the previous cell to generate a response for a math problem. We will apply this configuration to an example task from the tuning data. The code in the next cell will create a response using the autogen.chatcompletion.create function. We will pass in the tune underscore data one, example task and the config underscore list that we created earlier. We will also pass in the optimized configuration that we found in the previous cell. After generating the response, we will evaluate it using the eval underscore math underscore responses function and the tune underscore data one example task. The results of this evaluation will be stored in the metric underscore results variable. Finally, we will print out the generated response and the metric results for the example task. In this cell, we are using the optimized configuration that we found in the previous cell to generate a response for a math problem. We are applying this configuration to an example task from the tuning data. We are using the autogen.chatcompletion.create function to generate the response. We pass in the tune underscore data one example task and the config underscore list that we created earlier. We also pass in the optimized configuration that we found in the previous cell. After generating the response, we are evaluating it using the eval underscore math underscore responses function and the tune underscore data one example task. The results of this evaluation are stored in the metric underscore results variable. 
Finally, we are printing out the generated response and the metric results for the example task. In this cell, we're going to evaluate the success rate of our model on the test data. We'll be using the autogen.chatcompletion.test function to do this. However, be aware that this code will take a while to run, around 30 minutes to an hour, and will cost roughly $3. So, if you decide to run this code, be prepared to wait and pay for it. In this cell, we're going to evaluate the success rate of our model on the test data. To do this, we'll be using the autogen.chatcompletion.test function. This code will take some time to run, around 30 minutes to an hour, and will cost roughly $3. So, if you decide to run this code, be prepared to wait and pay for it. The code in this cell is currently commented out, but if you were to uncomment it, it would run the autogen.chatcompletion.test function with the test underscore data and config underscore list variables, and print out the performance of the model on the test data with the tune configuration. In this cell, we're comparing the performance of the default, untuned GPT-4 configuration with the tune configuration we found earlier. We're using the same prompt for both configurations to make a fair comparison. The code to evaluate the default configuration is currently commented out, but if you were to uncomment it, it would run the autogen.chatcompletion.test function with the test underscore data and config underscore list variables, and print out the performance of the model on the test data with the default configuration. However, be aware that running this code will take some time, around 30 minutes to an hour, and will cost roughly $2. So, if you decide to run this code, be prepared to wait and pay for it. In this cell, we have some code that is currently commented out. If we were to uncomment and run this code, it would cost roughly $2. The code is used to evaluate the performance of the default configuration for the GPT-4 model on the test data. The default configuration is specified in the default underscore config dictionary, which includes the model type, the prompt to use, and a flag to allow format string templates. The autogen.chatcompletion.test function is used to evaluate the performance of the default configuration on the test data, and the results are stored in the default underscore result dictionary. The results include the expected success rate, the actual success rate, the success rate based on voting, the number of votes, the cost of running the test, and the inference cost. The results are printed out using the print function. However, since this code is currently commented out, it will not be executed in the current run. In this cell, we have some code that is currently commented out. If we were to uncomment and run this code, it would print out the success rates for the tune and untune configurations of the GPT-4 model on the test data. The success rates are calculated based on voting, and the results are stored in the result and default underscore result dictionaries respectively. The first line of code would print out the success rate for the tune configuration, which is 90.5% for the current run. The second line of code would print out the success rate for the default, untuned configuration, which is 69.7% for the current run. It's important to note that this code is currently commented out, so it won't be executed in the current run. The next block of code in the notebook discusses the lower accuracy of the default configuration and suggests increasing the number of responses heuristically. In this cell, we are discussing the default configuration of the GPT-4 model and its lower accuracy compared to the tune configuration. However, the default configuration has a lower inference cost. The question we are asking is, what if we increase the number of responses heuristically? This is a question we will explore in the next block of code. In this cell, we have some commented out code that can be used to evaluate the success rates of the default configuration of the GPT-4 model on the test data. However, this evaluation costs $3 and takes longer than an hour to run. The code is currently not executed in this run. The code defines a configuration for the GPT-4 model with a default configuration and a value of n equal to 2. The test function is then called with this configuration and the test underscore data as input. The resulting success rate is stored in the result underscore n2 dictionary. 
The purpose of this code is to evaluate the success rate of the default configuration with a value of n equal to 2. However, due to the high cost of this evaluation, we have not run it in this current run. In the next block of code, we will explore the question of what happens if we increase the number of responses heuristically to improve the accuracy of the default configuration. In this cell, we're discussing the default configuration of the GPT-4 model and its inference cost. We've already seen that the default configuration has a lower success rate compared to the tune configuration, but it also has a lower inference cost. We're now asking the question, what if we increase the inference cost by doubling it to match the tune configuration? However, the success rate doesn't improve much. So, we're wondering if we should further increase the number of responses n to 5. This is a question we will explore in the next block of code. In this cell, we have some commented out code that we can use to evaluate the performance of the GPT-4 model with a default configuration and an increased number of responses. However, this evaluation is quite expensive, costing $8 and taking longer than an hour to run. The code specifies a configuration with the prompt, the model being used, and the number of responses set to 5. The test function is then called with this configuration and the result underscore in 5 variable is assigned the output. Finally, we print the performance of the GPT-4 model with the default configuration and 5 responses on the test data. However, we haven't actually run this code because it's too expensive. In the next block of code, we'll explore a heuristic approach to increasing the number of responses to improve the accuracy of the default configuration. In this cell, we have some comments that explain the performance of the GPT-4 model with a tune configuration versus the default configuration with an increased number of responses. The tune configuration has a higher success rate and lower inference cost, but increasing the number of responses for the default configuration can improve its accuracy. However, this evaluation is quite expensive, costing $8 and taking longer than an hour to run. The comments suggest that a developer could use Autogen to tune the configuration to satisfy the target inference budget while maximizing the value out of it. In conclusion, we have explored the success rates of the tune and untuned configurations of the GPT-4 model on test data. We have also discussed the trade-off between success rate and inference cost. We then explored heuristic approaches to improve the accuracy of the default configuration by increasing the number of responses. However, we noted that this evaluation is quite expensive. We also discussed the potential use of Autogen to tune the configuration to satisfy the target inference budget while maximizing the value out of it. Thank you for watching this video walkthrough.